Mark, if I could um, ask a qu question from the audience. Okay. Not from me, from the audience. Um, how high do you see the Fed fund rate going in this rate hike cycle? Is there, a, is there a point where you would get concerned about liquidity at highly leveraged companies? It's a great question. It's the, the question that everybody handicaps every time you look at a deal, right? Because if if mm -hmm. if we go to three, four, five percent on in Fed funds, um, that's going to be a very different interest rate coverage model for a lot of these deals that are five, six times senior. I mean, that's that's the reality. You're gonna have winners and losers mm -hmm. in that scenario. And it goes back to my early comment that this is the time where you you play defense well. Yeah. And and seeing that risk um, and thinking about the upside downside of that, and what's the upside of a lot of these credits? Um, you're gonna pick up another 20, 25 basis points for that. I mean, who wants to own that? So, so I think there, there's, a, there's a time to be very selective and that's now. Um, now, if the mm -hmm. Fed doesn't go the other direction and the, and the rates are not rising as much, we've got another problem. That means growth's not there. That means the economy is in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a tougher place. So there, there's no, there's no like easy lunch at this point. Um, and, you know, these are the cycles where, uh, at least I'm telling all of our people, this is where you, you figure out how smart you are. Bull markets teach you nothing about yourself. Bear markets mm -hmm. teach you everything about, you know, your, your investment process, your, your ability to call risk, your, your lack of ego, all of these things that you really need to, to live through once. So it'll be very interesting to see how that, that rate rise um, manifests itself through credit because um, we've certainly seen a lot of deals that, uh, in my mind, have, have too much leverage already. Um, and um, mm. interest coverage ratios look good and everything looks good, but we're starting to see some, some margin weakness across companies already. Um, and you couple that okay. um, with, with higher rates and you're going to have some companies that, that really are starting to struggle. When do, you start, when do you expect them to really start struggling? Next year? Year after? Um, I, again, it's, it's, if this is a longer cycle as I think it's going to be, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to, it's going really going to depend on, on individual companies and their ability to pass through costs. Um, you know, we're starting mm -hmm. to see that pain across, um, companies and the ones that have already had those sorts of issues in a, maybe some of the the, the uh, food products, et cetera, et cetera, they're already having problems. You know, they're already seeing, you know, material weakness in their EPA generation. And I think some of those credits are trading down already. So um, it, it's going to be an ongoing theme for the next several years. I, I don't, it's not, it's, you know, we don't see it as, as, okay, you know, it's all clear after this point, or it's all going to be great until here. It, it's, it's, it's really going to be, idiosyncratic across each each credit that we're looking at. 